three years go by, and then the Emperor summons Arel to the palace again. Hmm, the Emperor. Well, we've already decided the voice for this one. Arel, rise! What do you have to say for your failure at Balstra? Your Grace, I only ask your mercy towards the soldiers who fled the field of battle. Our failure at Garriaberg was my fault. I did my best, but it's hard to fight someone you went to school with. Do you really believe that reminding me there? Bah, bah, bah. Do you really think that reminding me of your cause just wasn't good enough will help your cause now? Yes, bit late. I want to change his name to Palpatine as well. The voice would be more fun to do as well. <sighs> Please, Your Grace. I am willing to sacrifice myself in exchange for your forgiveness towards my former soldiers. It did come as quite a shock, didn't it? I read the reports. Valstra should have been on its last legs. But I digress. It doesn't matter how well our armies have recovered. Nothing can undo the disaster that befell them three years ago. All that matters here and now is that my people have shed their blood on the land of her heretics. Their souls will find no rest here. What this voice is, Miss Fujimoto, is painful. This is a heavy burden, and it's yours to bear. I have prepared myself. Are you prepared? Your execution will not compensate me for their loss. Nor will it help their souls find peace. The annual miracle play will be upon us soon. I will let you arrange it this year. Your involvement should pacify the souls of the soldiers who've died so far from home. What? What? I mean, Pikachu? No, I mean your grace. Um, you will go to my garden. There are seven princesses there who will act with you in the play. Prepare them. But be warned, Arel. Do not forget your station once you are inside the garden. I am your humble servant, and I will need my station to take the train home. I will not break your trust again, Your Grace. I'm sure I look despondent as I, as I feel after the audience with the Emperor. I've been given an opportunity to redeem myself, but not in any situation I'm familiar with. One of the princesses among the seven is the Emperor's concubine. Another is a different vegetable, likely to whisper my every move right into Palpatine's ear. This person is called this this prison is called the Oblivious Garden. Those who live inside it are required to forget their past and become the Emperor's loyal pets, oblivious to the past, oblivious to the outside world, living only in the present, just as its name implies. Will I allow it to change me like that? There's probably no way to salvage the ruin I've made of Latoy. After I enter the garden, there won't be any hope of salvaging myself either. But if the Emperor st says that performing in the miracle play will give peace to the restless souls of my men, if there is a god watching over this land, over this country, watching me, I pray that you stop doing it while I'm in the toilet. I pray that you bestow your blessings on us all. But most importantly, I pray that you lead my fallen soldiers, along with all those who have died in the endless wars, to peace. If the miracle play will bring them peace, then I must fulfill my duty with honour. With newfound determination in my heart and resolve in my mind, I open the gates of the garden and step inside. Right. I enjoyed that. That was going on for a while. And Miss Fujimoto, I truly hope we won't have to say Balstra too often. And 
I can't remember who asked. I would love to do visual novels. I really not visual, just audio books of some description. I would love to do it, but I just have so much trouble finding time now. To... So, this is the Oblivious Garden, and we have three people: Janning, Diana. And Lyra and let's save. Did that save? Oh, I presume it did. <clears throat> okay. So, what should we do? Zanning, Diana, or Lyra? Any choice, guys? Anyone you'd like to see? <laughs> you need to go and take a nap? I, I was the one who said them all. They are Zanning. They are Diana. And they are Lyra. Now, Zanning is at the fencing hall. Diana is at the hanging roseland. And Lyra is at the tea party. Diana, Diana, Lyra. Diana, 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 Lyra, Lyra, Lyra. Oggy, oggy, oggy. Okay, let's go with Diana. My name is Arel Rice. Once, I was a baron. I have no middle name. I earned my title through honourable service to my country. But now my honour is nothing but dust in the wind. The Roseland is a garden within the garden, held aloft in the sky by the magic that built and sustains it. I am standing in an uninterrupted sea of roses that is uninterrupted except by where some were recently removed in an uninterrupted fashion, uninterruptedly. The empty spaces where their missing flowers once were formed. Two letters. I R. As she vanished, she somehow carved my initials into the sea of red. You think that I'm incredible? Well, that makes two of us. You're the one who is incredible, princess. I smile bitterly as I reminisce about what just happened. What actually did just happen? Did we miss something? No. Oh, right. Half an hour ago. Okay. Upon first entering the garden, my curiosity led me up to the improbable crystal staircase connecting a floating island to the earth below. Once I ascend to the top of the stairs, I see the island is broken into quadrants. Each one of those four sections is filled with bright red roses, uninterruptedly. I can't help but pause at the top of the steps. I've never seen so many roses before. In the centre of this red sea is a fountain where the water comes from. I can't say. Whether it originates, it feeds creeks that run underneath the walkways throughout the garden. The walkway I'm standing on is made of some transparent material. I can clearly see the water flowing beneath my feet. The creek runs to the edge of the garden and falls out into the sky, showering the lake before in a gentle mist. I take a deep breath. The air is filled with the heady scent of blooming roses. Those blooming roses! The sun is shining brightly in the sky, no closer for all the garden's height, but the clouds on the horizon seem almost close enough to touch. Even within the larger oblivious garden, an isolated world devoted completely to beauty and perfection, this place stands out as special. This garden is certainly the only one like it in the entire country. It's probably unique in all the world. K. 
careful not to harm the delicate petals all around me, I lead in to examine one of the rose bushes more closely. The petals are as dark a red as the blood I drew and shed on my many battlefields. But unlike the wars I fought in, these flowers don't cause anyone pain. They don't even have thorns. They are unblemished by the cruelty of the world. I've never seen such magnificent roses. The gardener who cares for this place must be a true master of their craft. Surely it must be a full-time job to maintain even such a small sliver of paradise. Strange that I don't see anyone tending to the plants right now. A sudden breeze causes ripples on the surface of the water as it blows through the sea of roses. The wind picks up thousands of the bright red petals. Once the wind dies down again, the petals fall in a gentle scarlet shower. When I bring my attention back from watching the petals, I see someone up ahead. She vanished. Looking around, I find her again further ahead. I rush to greet her, but stop before doing so. Ooh, voices. Sorry, I do the voices around here. Sound. I do the voices. Me. Just me. Nobody else. Not you, Charlotte. Not you, Eraface. Not you, Finn. I said not you, Finn. There we go. Look, Rosalind, the wind is stirring. Those clouds over there. The girl is sitting amidst the flowers. She has silver hair and wears a sky blue dress. We can hear their voices in laughter from here. How I envy them. Her eyes are red. Their shade reminds me of rosé, the type of sweet wine. <laughs> Simon is the star, absolutely. After journeying past the pristine lake, up the intricate crystal staircase, standing atop the floating island and eating from the magical nub nub root, and walking amidst a sea of unblemished roses, this young girl is the most stunning vision I've seen yet. But she's not talking to me. In farewell. She lets go of the rose as she, she seemed to be speaking to. The flower is caught by the wind and carried away. Thank you for talking to me, Rosalind. She stands up and turns around. Eek. She has noticed me. Yes. I don't know what to say to her. Marry me. She looks surprised. Sure, did you come from the outside? Yes, I did. I suppose so. Yes, I did. What do you guys think? Yes, I did or I suppose so. One or two? Yes, I did. Ten more seconds. <clears throat> okay, I think we're going with yes, I did, and hello, too many. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm confident of my reply. I was sent here with a purpose, and focusing on that purpose keeps me centered. I should introduce myself and apologize for startling her. Wonderful! What? Not startled then, but pleased? Tell me something about the outside. Incredible! You said all that without moving your lips. Sir, so you're saying that while the sky outside is the same, all the roses have thorns? Correct. Roses without thorns are a rare thing indeed. To say nothing of so many perfect roses all in one place, thorns or not. It's comfortable sitting in a field of roses without thorns. 
We have been here for a while now. She kept asking me questions about the outside world. The outside. Sometimes when she talks about it, she uses an ancient word, one that I don't know. Flip nibble. As far as I know, only the old mages use such archaic, archaic languages. While answering this girl's questions, I've become more and more curious about her. Who is she? What is she? She must be of noble birth, judging by the way she speaks and carries herself. Cool, blimey, you're right, I'm a curly queen. But experience has taught me that members of the royal family are typically more arrogant than she is. I pick up a rose. A rose without any thorns. Ah! She cries out while jumping up. What is it? I spent all this time hearing about the outside that I completely forgot about the time. Do you have somewhere to be? We're having a rare meeting today. I heard that there's something important going on. I'm sorry to have delayed you then. It's alright. Thank you for telling me about the outside. She turns to go. Oh, why? I don't even know your name. Can you tell me? I hesitate. Maybe she's heard of me. The scandals, the shame, my lack of trousers, my failure. I imagine her hating me. The thought alone is painful. Arel Rice. Arel? Arel Rice? She frowns. I wait for her to condemn me. It's a strange name. After bracing myself for censure, I'm left speechless and relieved instead. She hasn't heard of me. But it is refreshing. It tastes like a wind. She smiles. My name is Diana. Princess of Thermoskaya, perhaps? I don't know. Another breeze picks up as some of the rose petals and sends them spinning around us. She gives me her name. Here, this rose is for you. I suppose they are roses. First glance, as they look like radishes. Get item. Rose. Yay, we've won. Wait. She vanishes into the rose bushes. When did she... Two letters are here in front of me. I-R. I am Weasel. 